<laughs> What's up, potheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. I'm Jeremiah, here with Carly Marley. Hi, Hi Carly Marley. And we are social distancing outdoors and getting high. We wanted to do a show today to talk about um, getting high and social distancing. I know uh, lots of craziness out there in the world, all this COVID-19 stuff. We hope everybody out there is staying safe and keeping your distance from others. Um, Carly and I virtually live together, so... We've we can, been quarantining together. We've been, <laughs> yeah, we've been quarantining for the last um, two weeks because Carly had some symptoms, or they went away a couple weeks ago, so we're back in action now, but we're outdoors. This is one of our first trips out of the homestead. Um, for those who live in apartments and can't really smoke pot inside, um, you know, in, in Vancouver, at least, it's still okay to go outdoors as long as you keep away from others and, you know, don't touch too much stuff and all that kind of thing. It's best to stay inside as much as you can, but if you do have to go out and you do have to smoke, a place like this where we're at right now, which is not near anybody at all, we're way up here on the hill in... Uh, we climbed up a little man we climbed, rock We wall. did. Here, let me... I'm going to show this out. Uh, here, let me spin this around so I can show you guys the spot we're at here. It's quite quite far away from everything and everybody. Really beautiful spot here up on the hill. If you have to smoke somewhere in social distance, this is the kind of place you want to be. Um, let me see if I can zoom in there on Vancouver. Oh, no. Oh. Didn't work. That's okay. <laughs> um, mm, so... Obviously, the world uh, is changing quite quickly, and we, it's been a few weeks since we've been on the air on Cannabis Culture Live here. But yeah, I mean, it's um, kind of a scary situation out there in the world. Mm. And uh, I think everybody's doing everything they can. It seems like governments are stepping up, and there's actually lots of... I'm, I'm feeling hopeful about things, even though um, we've got a tough situation ahead of us, obviously. I think that people coming together and doing as much as they can is... You know, really a, a hopeful thing, actually. Coming together by not coming together. Coming together by not coming together. Absolutely. And there's, we got My, Michael and Johnny in the chat. Hi, guys. Good to see the chatters. Yeah, so, uh, you know, of course, obviously everybody knows that um, because of the COVID stuff, we've had to cancel the big 420 event in Vancouver. Unfortunately, you know, when you have that many people together in one place, it makes sense to uh, to obviously not do that kind of stuff. But we are going to be having an online official Vancouver 420 broadcast on 420. Mm. So we're going to try to include some familiar faces and lots of fun for you guys um, on 420. So tune into Pot TV, Pot.TV and CLN. We're doing a joint broadcast to bring you guys a big April 20th show, so we're not sure exactly what time it's going to start yet, but we're hoping to include all of the Canadian 420s in that, so it'll probably be a four to five hour show on 420. Mm. It's good to see all you guys there, and best wishes to everybody. We, we do hope that everybody's keeping it uh, safe out there, and obviously joints are an interesting one because passing joints to people, you know, probably isn't the best thing to do during a pandemic. We're still passing joints to yeah. each other, of course, but... Um, we've been in such close proximity. Yeah, we've been in isolation with yeah. each other the whole time, and we're boyfriend and girlfriend, so it's one of those <laughs> things. It's like, you know, probably um, okay to pass joints back and forth from each other, but if you, you know, are out there in the world, don't share your joints if you don't have to, and or get one of those little tips that you put on them, glass tips. I we had a Miss Envy glass tip I was going to bring, but I forgot. Um, those things are also good. The Chillum style, show them how the Chillum style works on your hand. I'm holding the camera so I can't do it, but... I have a lot of hair to do this. But. This also works so you don't have to touch stuff directly to your, your face. It went out, so it's not going to work right now. Yeah. It is a little windy outside, so for, for those of us who live in apartment complexes, it makes it a little bit difficult during this self-isolation stuff to actually smoke in your apartment without your neighbors ratting you out or getting angry and your landlord getting upset. Um, luckily, some of us have balconies, others don't. So like we were saying, it's best if you have to go outside to find a spot where there's no other human beings or as few as possible. It's kind of nice anyways, you know, but uh, that's where we are here in Vancouver. This is about a 15 minute drive from my house in Vancouver <clears throat> up on the hill. They call it High Point or High View Point um, up uh, Cyprus. Good to see all you guys in the chat there. We're still smoking doobies. 
And uh, hopefully everybody's stocked up on a weed supply if you do have to socially isolate. Yeah, Mike said, I, I've hit it like that for years. It's true that a, a lot of people have been doing this social isolation <laughs> thing for a long time anyways, just because they're introverts. Um, so it's not that huge of a change for a lot of people, but for others, it really is tough though. And you know, I think a lot of people are going through a lot of different things now with having to be separated from people and that kind of stuff. Hopefully, um, you know, a, a lot of folks are using new technology like Skype or Zoom is the new one where you can put a bunch of people together. And, and yeah, I think um, in the chat there, Roxy's talking about a sm smell proofing, um, smoking every day for almost three years in your apartment. I think uh, next week on the show, we may do one from my apartment where we show you some tips and tricks on how to actually cut your apartment off from the rest with, uh, you know, the towel under the door thing, the smoking in the bathroom if you can with the fan, that kind of stuff. There are things, of course, that you can do to sort of smell proof your apartment. Um, Smoke buddies also work. Those are those little things that you blow in. I just added a bunch of new colors and styles to Cannabis Culture HQ.com too. So if you uh, want to try Smoke Buddy, now's a good time. Oh yeah, we got new Smoke Buddies oh, online. Yeah. Lots of new Smoke Buddies, lots of new goodies online. Yeah, so Cannabis Culture, uh, we're, we're still open in Vancouver, our store. Of course, we're going through the you know, all the um, requirements, like only letting two people in the store at the same time and making sure that everybody is adequately physically distanced from each other with the X's on the ground and all that kind of stuff. Um, we do, we have closed our lounges down for any sort of seating capacity. High score has been closed completely. Uh, we just felt it was the right thing to do. CC lounge upstairs is still open for retail, but uh, we do have all the social distancing rules in place there. But if you do need every, everything but the weed, you can get that online at CannabisCultureHQ.com. Carly Marley's the manager. Um, that's still functional and you can still do orders on there. Um, there might be a, a slight delay because Carly was uh, in social isolation for a little bit there. Yeah, so so long as I don't start to show any You symptoms, have no symptoms. Linda, I don't have any right now, but I've been, you know, playing it safe for a few days, so I'm hoping... Two weeks? Yeah, <laughs> so Monday I should be uh, back, back in, in action. action. Yeah, so I'll be starting to ship out some orders as of Monday. We're still taking orders, so go yeah. ahead and check it out. I've been working from home a lot and adding a lot of products while doing that in isolation so go check out cannabisculturehq.com lots of new goodies online there and a big sales section too so go check and it out. the curls carly you're getting a lot of comments on the oh, curls here i just i just let it do its thing <laughs> i love your cur curly carly Thanks. curly carly yeah those are that's your natural hair that's how you've had your whole life essentially right when people see the straight that's because you do stuff yeah, to it. yeah i'm yeah. just letting it i didn't have time to straighten it today so i just it I do. love it the way it is. I, I think Washington. you should just you wear it like that a lot. It's, really it's unpredictable cute. though. So sometimes it'll look, go well. Other times it just like looks like not so. <laughs> I love so. it. <laughs> it's wild. Uh oh, damn. I'm having a hard time holding this thing. Corona curls, says Cannabis Culture. <laughs> that must be a Neil. <laughs> Next doobie? <clears throat> yeah, light another one here. Oh, I got one in my pocket. We brought joints. But yeah, it is kind of, it's tough. Obviously, cannabis people are so usually, you know, social types that share joints with each other. So um, it's kind of hit a lot of the people on our side of things hard because you can't really pass your joints. And obviously, things like 420 are non-starters. Um, so I know that a lot of people all over the place are going to be doing 420 Zoom events where <clears throat> you can get a big group of people together. That looks like it's going to be some fun on 420 on April 20th. There's a bunch of activists and others who are doing it. We will also have that capability for our 420 broadcast that's coming up in just a couple weeks. Um, we've got our Zoom accounts and everything set up so that we can uh, have a panel of potheads. Um, I think uh, Marijuana Man, Greg Williams, will be the host of our event. He'll anchor our 420 broadcast. Um, we're going to be producing it in studio and also out there in the world with everybody tuning in from their own home studios. So that should be some fun. Um, that's uh, going to be starting early, probably right before noon Pacific time on 420. We're not quite sure of the time yet. We're going to be advertising this stuff around. You grab that there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but we wanted to bring you guys, you know, some sort of community thing for 420 because it really everybody's kind of lonely and it kind of sucks not being able to get together so we're planning some fun and if you're one of our friends or family and you want to be in on the big zoom feed i think we're going to have like a hundred folks at least 
tuning in for the big zoom um, so you can get on the air too and at 420 we'll all light our joints together <coughs> it won't be you know the 15 150,000 strong crowd that we have for the big event itself mm. but with all our friends out there tuning in it should be fun and hopefully we'll have some musical performances for you guys we're working that stuff out with our music manager Creed Taylor hey Cindy's in the chat hi Sandy mm. it's good to see you guys <laughs> And I know that uh, we haven't had all of our Pot TV broadcasts going on in the last little while. Some people have been isolating. Um, others are doing okay. Um, I think Neil just didn't do his broadcast last week. I think Anil is uh, Anil's the producer of most of our stuff. He'll be, I think, back in studio soon. Um, this thing's out again. Oh, no, it's not. Mm. And shout out to BC Bed Gal for holding it down Monday's show while I've been... You've been away. In pajamas. In <laughs> The PJs. Yes, resting, taking care of myself so I can get back to doing what I like to do. Oh, Cindy's with D, with Dana, I guess, planning Hi, things. Yeah. Good to see you guys. It should be fun. Mm, this is really good. What is this that mint that we had? I don't know. We'll pick it up. Mm, damn, that's some nice weed. <laughs> Has everybody out there got a nice supply of pot? You guys all stocked up? Let us know in the chat what you've stocked up on or if you've got some good strains that you've got uh, at home and again I wanted to show off here I'll give you a second here show off where we're at this is actually not too far out of downtown Vancouver it's just across the bridge um, and uh, it's about 15 minutes from from downtown van but you can really see it's just a beautiful spot up here and there's not a heck of a lot of other human beings around here some really nice houses and stuff but Man, this view is just so awesome. Yes, and we are a couple. We are still sell it, or uh, we are still uh, sharing joints here. That's uh, we're not breaking any big rules here. We sleep in the same bed, you know. So our germs are already mixed. But yes, we are still passing joints to each other. But that's it. Nobody else. Nobody else. And all you guys out there, don't pass your joints. Um, smoke to your smoke to your dome. Get yourself a nice little pipe or a bong. That's the way to do it. Stay safe. Better safe than sorry, you know? I, I haven't, um, I know that some, you know, younger people are being afflicted with the whole COVID thing. Um, it is hitting older people harder, I think, for the most part. I don't know if I can zoom in or out there once I've flipped it around, but I'm gonna come back over here. Yeah, here, we'll switch sides so I can use this hand. Um, but yeah, I mean, even younger people are being hit. There's been some really sad news out there. Um, you know about uh, some famous artists and musicians and stuff who have succumbed unfortunately to the whole covid thing you know it can hit anybody it doesn't discriminate it's uh it really is the, sort of the great equalizer in a lot of ways everybody nobody's immune and everybody can be a target so keep it safe out there there's a lot of things obviously everybody's seen all the news how you can really uh, do that make sure that you're wearing gloves when you need to and oh bill withers today Man, yeah, there's been some unfortunate ones. It's sad. And, you know, I, I, what I'm hoping is that this really makes people wake up to a lot of the different problems we have in society. Yeah, we're re we really are all in this together, and I hope that mentality goes on after this COVID thing stops. Um, you know, like in the United States, where people don't have regular health care, you know, I think people are waking up to the idea that, they should get help for COVID or everybody should have help for COVID, but they should also have help for all the other things that can kill your ass, you know, cancer and everything else without healthcare in the United States. There's a lot of people who are just out there by themselves floating without any sort of safety net at all. Um, and really society should to take a good look at itself um, and all the things that are happening right now and see if we can implement some of these things longer term, not the necessarily the isolation stuff, but just the idea of, the government actually helping people in need as much as they can. Um, that's, I think, you know, something that in Canada, it's a little different than the U S but there's a lot of that stuff that we can learn up here in Canada too. So, and again, I hope that we, we sort of look at some of these things before they happen. I know with this one, like, you know, predicting these things isn't always easy, but there are people out there who have been predicting this for a long time and trying to get our governments to do stuff that they still don't really even want to step up and do even at the moment. So I'm hoping that uh, the positive stuff that comes out of this can have a big, huge effect and, and really help us move forward, not just uh, for the COVID thing, but for all kinds of stuff. You know, one positive thing I've seen is the amount of pollution that's dropped 
and the damage to the earth that's sort of ceasing as people sort of take it easy. I'm hoping some of that will continue and uh, we can really sort of make things better on a larger scale for everybody. Well, and what's interesting is a lot of these scary viruses that we've seen, not even just COVID, but they were originally viruses just found in animals. And the more we push into their environments, the more we're going to force these viruses into normal society when they're not really supposed to be introduced to humans. I was reading a lot about the research shown that. So You're a veggie head. I am, but the, you know, the point is that, you know, if we want to avoid these kinds of pandemics from happening again and again, we need to be careful and respect the territory and respect animals areas and you know worry about our impact on climate change because we shouldn't be changing the landscape so much that we're introducing new viruses that humans immune systems aren't equipped to deal with naturally so we have to be careful of that and you know these are this is one of the impacts that we're seeing when we're forcing our way into other animals environments is viruses getting introduced to human population that shouldn't be there so yeah well and i think in in other ways too i mean some of the the things that have been happening in the united states and elsewhere with you know releasing nonviolent prisoners from jail um because obviously jails are a real big hot spot for the spread of this kind of stuff i mean i think we really need to look at why we're putting people that are nonviolent behind bars in the first place um, and, you know, why do we have these massive prison populations of people who are just ripe for this kind of stuff? You know, the, it's really pointed out in a big way that the conditions in prisons are already so bad and the sanitary conditions and everything are really through the floor. Um, they're really hotbeds of all kinds of disease as it is, unfortunately, just because of the way that they're designed and set up. So I'm hoping that the attention to a lot of these different things will, will bring major positive change. Um, and not just, you know, let us go back into what we were already doing before. But it could be a while before things really do go back to normal. Um, and maybe they'll never go back quite the same way that they were. But, you know, we, we've been watching the news and they've been talking about, at first they were talking about a couple months. And now they're talking about, you know, past summer and, you know, it could be 18 months before they find a vaccine for this thing. Um, yeah, and, and as Cannabis Culture brought up there in the chat... Um, restricting access to soap and stuff like that in jails and they charge people, you know, you have to buy the soap and canteen in your canteen and all this kind of stuff. That stuff should be all over the place for everybody in any of those conditions. Um, some of the stuff that's kind of a little scary though, and I'm going to, here, I'm going to switch this around. I just can't hold it with this arm anymore. My arm's getting tired. Um, hold on here. There we go. <laughs> that's easier. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I lost my train of thought there, but in terms of prisons, yeah, I think those places are really rough as it is, and this kind of attention on them can only bring positive things, I hope. Um, what we have seen here is the suspension of people's civil rights in a lot of different ways, which is kind of scary. Um, I think in, in China and other places, you know, in the Philippines, for instance, Duterte, the president there, is talking about shooting people dead if they don't follow the rules and stuff. That is, you know, obviously scary stuff. And a lot of you're hearing about um, digital surveillance of people to track them. Um, you know, and I think some of that is valid. Uh, even Glenn Greenwald, who is obviously, uh, I don't know if anybody, you know, a lot of people probably know Glenn out there from The Intercept, um, The Guardian. He's a journalist who's been talking about surveillance for a long time, was instrumental in uh, helping Edward Snowden's information get out. He is even coming out and saying, look, we do need to use technology to try to help in a crisis situation, but we can't let these things get too far and let some of this stuff um, get instilled where the, this becomes the government's excuse to track us on all levels and take away all of our rights and continue what's going on now into the future in blind ways. Um, I think we need to, to be continually checking on these things and making sure that our civil liberties aren't being suspended past where they need to be. Um, even some of the stuff I've been seeing, you know, you know people talking about um, socially isolating from your family members within your own house. Or what was the one we were just talking about when we were driving up here? Um, something that I can't remember what it was now. But they are giving out fines and they are um, stopping people's cars and doing all kinds of stuff like that. Some of that I think is valid and others uh, maybe not so valid. So again, I think it, it's sensibility. It's, you know, looking at what's actually needed if there's scientific proof to putting instilling some of these things. Um, and maybe if, even if we think it's going to help in certain ways, 
that's a good thing as long as it doesn't take away our rights in a huge way. Um, in Vancouver, they haven't really gone to that extent yet. You know, you haven't people haven't been forced to be in their homes um, against their will. If they do want to go to the grocery store or other places, they can still do that stuff without having to get a government pass or something along those lines. So I think the sensibility, uh, you know, if people can actually, you know, when you see people going to like the Florida beaches and packing them, that is discouraging, obviously. And Vancouver beaches. <laughs> yeah, the ends of Vancouver beaches. It was happening until they closed them. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, education is a big part of it, making sure people understand how uh, important it is to do that kind of stuff. But, again, people do have, should have the freedom to, you know, if they need to go to the grocery store, go to the grocery store. They need to do these other things, do those things. Um, I think uh, there's got to be a fine balance of this stuff. Yeah, and I think the, the key here is if you don't want them to put extra rules in and you don't want them to infringe upon your rights... Take your own personal self-responsibility, stay in, flatten the curve, you know, take all the responsibilities that you need to to stay safe and keep others safe. And the more we do that and the more we see the numbers drop, then we aren't going to be forced to put extra measures in, in, in yeah. you know, as long as we follow what we're being told to do now, they won't need to put in extra precautions because we'll be able to flatten the curve. So Exactly. No, that... I think people taking some responsibility for themselves will help things and then make it so that the government doesn't have to step in exactly. so much. Exactly. Yeah. Not that I'm necessarily saying, yeah, watch us, government, but at the same time, they're not going to have to step in and do those things if, if we're, you know, taking yeah. those steps ourselves. Exactly. And, and I think that, you know, going forward in the future, I hope, I just hope that we don't get so scared that we allow the government to pretty much do whatever it wants. Now, in the United States, we've seen a little bit of that with deranged moron President Trump, um, who, of course, uses any opportunity that he can to try to continue to dump more money into the hands of private business and uh, really, you know, take away people's rights as much as possible. Um, I think Trump, you know, this whole bailout that they're getting down there for all these <clears throat> the big corporations and stuff, they're really still not helping individual people enough. So, you know, some of this, I hope, just doesn't become a government excuse to dump money, more money into the hands of private enterprise and take it away from the people. Seems like everything that happens is always, the, you know, they co-opt any sort of movement out there and turn it into something that ends up, you know, giving rich people more money and taking money away from the general population. Um, so I'm hoping that it goes the opposite way and that uh, when things really get grim, the, you know, the government really does step in to help people and that some of those things will continue on. Like we were saying earlier, things like, you know, health care in the United States, that'd be good. I saw Bernie Sanders on TV talking earlier today and, uh, and he, you know, all of his ideas, I think, are basically being proven right. They, they, it shouldn't have taken something like this to do it. But yeah. I think, you know, a, a lot of the things he's been talking about for a long time, people are seeing why that stuff's important and not just in a COVID situation, but just in life in general. Um, yeah, and essential services, there's been in Canada here, uh, they've, and in some states in the United States, they've made cannabis an essential service. So the, the legal stores are allowed to remain open and sell cannabis. But I think it's remarkable that we went from a situation where the government was, you know, and still is putting people in prison for cannabis, still arresting people for cannabis, even here in Canada, but at the same time saying that it's an essential service. So how can they still go after medical marijuana dispensaries and things like that and, and put people in prison while they're saying that this is an essential service? It's just brutal and it's pointing out these massive hypocrisies. So I, I hope that's one of the positives that come out of this is some of those hypocrisies really see the light of day and people say, hey, that doesn't make sense. If this is an essential service, why are we stopping people from getting it in general and putting people in prison for providing it? I think yeah. it was Chelsea Handler that tweeted, imagine being incarcerated for cannabis and watching the government declared an essential service. Yeah. That would be horrible. So, you know. No, it's insane. It's crazy. That and should be a motivator right there. Like, as soon as you deem it an essential service, then you're recognizing it's something society needs. How can you let people stay in prison for providing that service to people, that essential service to people, before it was legalized? No kidding. 
I know it makes no sense. And, and really it points out that, you know, that cannabis people have been providing an essential service to people for years without government approval and have been suffering for it and going to jail. Decades and decades and decades. Yeah. And the, and the government isn't recognizing that, especially here in Canada. In some states, the government is recognizing that yeah. people, the activists who fought to bring you cannabis, this essential cannabis service, um, have, should have reparations or should be at least, um, you know, let out of jail or have their sentences expunged and all that kind of stuff. Uh, their records expunged. But, you know, in Canada, that's just not happening yet. They're, they haven't really moved forward. They haven't, you know, um, told, you know, appreciated the activists who came before that were providing this essential service for so long. In fact, they're still trying to put them in prison and go after them. Uh, yeah, essential in Canada since 1606. There you go. It says Anil in the chat. Um, but yeah, if you just tuned in, we're here up high, social, socially isolating high away from everybody um, in, I guess it's, is it West Van? Yep. West. It's on the North Shore. Yeah, it's on the North Shore, so you got to cross the bridge to get over here. Yes, free Jerry Martin and all the drug war prisoners. We're here up on the hilltop, socially isolating. There's no other humans around us. We picked, a, we picked a, part, a place where we've got, you know, we were able to park and there was no people nearby when we got out of the car. And then we came up here and it's not like a park or a tourist destination. It's just a nice, nice little place to come. Good view. It and is so very nice. To come and, you know, see all the somebody else coming up here is uh, very low and we're not in anybody else's space. Well, Carly, what do you think about in the Vancouver East End? I, I know you've heard some of the news about them actually trying to find a safe supply of drugs for the people that are there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a positive thing that's coming out of this whole COVID thing is that, uh, here, I'm going to flip this camera around again, that, that Vancouver has actually stepped up now in the face of all this. They know what a tinderbox it is down there and a bomb waiting to go off, basically, where these people aren't going to be able to get their supply of drugs um, that they need. That puts a lot of people's lives at risk um, and could make utter chaos down there. So <clears throat> it's good to see the government of Vancouver actually stepping up to do something about it finally. Well, I mean, I think it's kind of similar to to what you were saying like now that it, it's it's an essential thing that's happening it's similar to cannabis being deemed an essential service this should motivate the government and obviously they realize this is something that happened is happening people need a clean supply of drugs so that's something that the government should be stepping up and doing all the time it should never be a risk for somebody to go and be able to to deal with the addiction disease that they're dealing with yeah, and I mean, exactly. It shouldn't have to take something like this um, to show you that, you know, these people are, are in need and that they have a lot of issues and problems there um, that aren't going to go away if you just make what they're doing illegal. If you make this product that they're addicted to illegal, then it makes things a billion times worse. And, and you know, and people on the downtown east side risk their health and safety all the time when they're going to get their fix, even when there isn't a pandemic happening because of the fentanyl crisis and all sorts of other reasons. Right. So, you know, it was already an should, epidemic. The government should be stepping up because if, you know, if you care about the safety of the people during an epidemic, then step up and care about the safety of the people during an epidemic. The fentanyl crisis should count. The opioid crisis should count. Yeah. I mean, how many people have been dying down there for so long um, and nobody has stepped stepped up and, and in all the face of scientific evidence and everything else the government has refused to really step up and do anything about it and in fact tried to make it worse so you know yeah i think uh having a clean supply of drugs is the smart way to do that and government has a role in in helping to provide that um in order to you know there's a whole bunch of reasons why it's much better to provide that drug to people than have them struggling to survive out on the streets while they look for it or have to do you know break into other people's homes to steal stuff to be able to afford to get it um it, it kind of protects everybody in society when you help these folks get the the drugs they need and have a safe supply of it and it really rather than risking so many lives um it's it's the right thing to do so we just wanted to come and tune in with you guys and uh have a quick talk it's been a while a couple of weeks since we've i've been on the air um carly too on her show shout out to bc bud gal again <laughs> yeah. i think she was in the chat at one point maybe i have not or, left the home at all in over two weeks so. yeah and how did you feel about that like i was with you so i know but tell them how it's been going for um, you um i've been okay i've been lucky one because i wasn't completely alone in my isolation we in intentionally isolated together it's nice to have a buddy yeah um and also i've 
but like I work from home a lot already so I'm kind of used to sitting at home doing work in my PJ so it wasn't a huge adjustment I was starting to get a little bit antsy but I'm okay with it you know I had my birthday in quarantine and that was all yes. good you know we just it was Carly Marley's yeah. birthday <laughs> on the 26th so we just watched happy birthday Carly Marley <laughs> thanks I was fortunate enough to spend it with you yes. unfortunately we didn't have a big birthday party or anything but Carly made herself a birthday cake I like cake he told which me was amazing and delicious <laughs> and, ah, shit. he told me I shouldn't make myself uh -oh. A birthday cake but I like to bake uh -oh, and I'm stuck at home so there we go Sorry. I figured might as well that was how I wanted to you're do amazing it. at baking <laughs> Carly always well you guys have seen on her shows she's always cooking up something <laughs> but your birthday cake was delicious well I'm glad you enjoyed it it was it was fun I'm gonna prop hopefully after the quarantine's done I want to like actually go out and do something with you know a few people that'd be nice so maybe other people who also were stuck in on their birthdays i'll talk to them because i know i wasn't the only one so yes have a joint belated birthday yeah. party that would be kind of cool yes you know making the most of it <laughs> yeah yeah no and it but it was fun you know having somebody in isolation with you is a heck of a lot better obviously than not I mean, it depends on. We watched people. a lot of Netflix, and we have been watching Netflix. We did watch Tiger King. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh man! And if you I had to convince him to watch it at first, he thought it was going to be like a reality show, but yeah, uh, within like a minute and a half of it being on, he was like, "What in the fuck is this?" Oh, <laughs> so, and thank you for convincing me to watch you're it. You're welcome. If you haven't seen Tiger King, do yourself a favor and check it out. It is insane. It's good TV, that's for sure. That is definitely a way to put it, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy story. But also, I, I really liked Uncut Gems. Oh, if you haven't so seen good. Uncut Gems, really it's good. available for free or on Netflix as well if you have a subscription. An Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make the mistake of watching the movie that Jeremiah suggested we watch, Contagion. <laughs> we, we did watch Contagion. Mediocre movie, still having nightmares about it. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was Too okay. <laughs> Directed by Steven Soderbergh, um, it's a movie that's kind of about what's going on right now in a big way. In there, in the movie, things are a little more grim. And There's more a higher extreme. death rate, but it's weird how so much of the stuff that's happening right now is actually predicted in that movie. And, and it's got footage of people like coughing and being sick, and then they're like, you know, using public transit, and it's just so like cringy. It's so weird seeing those things. It took a while for that to happen, but now it's weird on TV seeing people like in crowded buses and like yeah. hanging out together, like sharing cigarettes or what, like, you know, anything like that. It's just like weird. I know every time I see some rule being broken, I'm like, COVID. I know. I feel distancing. like I'm gonna forever be a little more cautious now. Yep. Yeah, well, I think we probably should, and it's probably yeah. for the best. Um, you know, I, I mean, these kinds of things have happened in the past. Obviously, in 1918, the Spanish flu was a big one. A lot of deaths there, and a lot of people had it all over the world. But things do go back to normal. Um, I think our memory, though, shouldn't be so short. We should probably take a lot of this stuff to heart and make sure that systems in the future are a little bit more equipped so that if this does happen again, you know, the basics, things like having enough facial the ppes the the masks and stuff for doctors um that kind of stuff seems pretty important you know so it seems odd uh, that we are caught with our pants down so far on a lot of this stuff when they have known about this but yeah life could change for the better as johnny b says in the chat right there um you know so it's not all bad out there you know we're keeping positive yeah the there sun's, are positive sun's, things sun's still shining the sun is shining here up on the hill in beautiful Vancouver. But uh, my arm's getting tired of holding this thing here. We got one more <laughs> joint to light. Do you, I don't know if you want to... That's not a joint. No, we got one more in my pocket. Oh, okay. I yeah, like, I just don't have enough happen. hands to do it all here. So, um, But I want to show you guys the place up here one more time. <laughs> if you are in Vancouver and you're bored of sitting in your apartment, um, there's a lot of pretty nice places where there's not a heck of a lot of people. You don't have to go to Stanley Park and get close to people in the city. Yeah, health needs to be a societal priority, exactly. And as Johnny said, we will be cleaner. Yeah, I bet that's true. <laughs> that's not a joint. <laughs> oh man, it's just, let me zoom in one more time here. It's really beautiful up here. There's the landscape bridge there. Beautiful. So this is social, the type of social isolation that I can get down with up here. And to also clarify, we haven't left like the house. This is the first time we've left the house. It's true. We haven't been going out. We haven't been 
breaking the rules. We've been really keeping mm-hmm. it to ourselves for the past couple of weeks here. So yeah. it's been good. We've been following all the rules. Yeah. And now we're out of uh, quarantine. So this is our, like, we're still this is our gonna, big trip we're here. We're still going <laughs> to isolate. We're still going to keep to ourselves. I'm still going to do pretty much all of my work from home. But I'm going to start going in to ship out orders and stuff like that. So. Yep. And I like what Anil said there in the chat. Physically distanced, but not socially distanced. That is true. Social, you can do social all over the place. Social media, Zoom, Skype, everywhere, the telephone. But yes, physically distance. That's the smart way to do it. <laughs> mm. And smoke some good cannabis. Yeah. There will be an article coming up on CannabisCulture.com by the amazing David Mamo Levine about COVID and cannabis and some of the stuff there. It's quite an article. Um, David's quite a quite a journalist he's got a lot of sources and amazing stuff to bring to you guys so mm, check out all the cool stuff on cannabisculture.com and on pot.tv where is that where is that cali no this is in vancouver british columbia we're up here in canada it's quite beautiful but yeah and as carly was saying earlier check out all the goodies on cannabisculturehq.com you can still get that that stuff sent out to the house social isolate or physical isolation stuff um like uh you know the smoke buddies and all that kind of stuff we are going to do i think next week on the show um from my apartment and give you guys a few tips on how to sort of smell proof your apartment or how you can you know smoke in your apartment without pissing your neighbors off or getting yourself kicked out of your apartment step Um, one turn bob marley up real loud (laughs) (laughs) all right guys it was fun to see all you guys in the chat we love you lots peace Give him a last view here. There you go. Love you guys. Drug peace. <laughs>